I came here to reaffirm the importance of Turkey and the importance of the partnership between our two countries. I came here out of my respect to Turkey's democracy and culture and my belief that Turkey plays a critically important role in the region and in the world. And I came to Turkey because I'm deeply committed to rebuilding a relationship between the United States and the people of the Muslim world, one that's grounded in mutual interest and mutual respect. Uh, Turkey and the United States have a long history of partnership and cooperation. Exchanges between our two peoples go back over 150 years. We've been uh, NATO allies for more than five decades. We have deep ties in trade and education, in science and research. And America is proud to have many men and women of Turkish origin who have made our country a more dynamic and a more successful place. So uh, Turkish-American relations rest on a strong foundation. Uh, that said, I know that there have been some difficulties in recent years. In some ways, that foundation uh, has been weakening. We've had some specific differences over policy, but we've also at times lost the sense that both of our countries are in this together, that we have shared interests and shared values, and that we can have a partnership that serves our common hopes and common dreams. So I came here to renew that foundation and to build on it. I enjoyed visiting your parliament. I've had productive discussions with uh, your president and your prime minister. Uh, but I also always like to take some time to talk to uh, people directly, uh, especially young people. So in the next few minutes, I want to focus on three areas in which I think we can make some progress. Uh, advancing dialogue between our, t our two countries, but, but also advancing dialogue between the United States and the Muslim world. Uh, extending opportunity in education uh, and uh, in social welfare. And then also reaching out to young people as our best hope for peaceful, uh, prosperous futures in both Turkey and in the United States. Now, let me just uh, talk briefly about those three points. First, I believe we can have a dialogue that's open, honest, vibrant, and grounded in respect. And I want you to know that I'm personally committed to a new chapter of American engagement. We can't afford to talk past one another, to focus only on our differences, or to let the walls of mistrust go up around us. Instead, we have to listen carefully to each other. We have to focus on places where we can find common ground and respect each other's views, even when we disagree. And if we do so, I believe we can bridge some of our differences and divisions that we've had in the past. A part of that process involves giving you a better sense of America. I know that the stereotypes of the United States are out there, and I know that many of them are informed not by direct exchange or dialogue, but by television shows and movies uh, and misinformation. Uh, sometimes it suggests that America has become selfish and crass or that we don't care about the world beyond us, and I am here to tell you that that's not the country that I know and it's not the country that I love. America, like every other nation, has made mistakes and has its flaws. But for more than two centuries, we have strived at great cost and sacrifice to form a more perfect union, to seek with other nations a more hopeful world. We remain committed to a greater good, and we have citizens in countless countries who are serving uh, in wonderful capacities as doctors and as agricultural specialists, people, teachers, people who are committed uh, to making the world a better place. We're also a country of different backgrounds and races and religions that have come together around a set of shared ideals. And we are still a place where anybody has a chance to make it if they try. If that wasn't true, then somebody named Barack Hussein Obama would not be elected President of the United States of America. That's the America I want you to know. 